This is air transportation, serving the needs of a mobile nation. The big, the small. It is a transportation system involving the employment of one half million Americans, 300,000 by the airlines, 250,000 in general aviation, approximately one million in aircraft manufacturing and related industries. It is a system that directly contributes more than $35 billion a year to the gross national product. It is a system that has played a major role in keeping the balance of payment situation from becoming a major disaster. Above all, it is a system that moves people and products. The airlines, commuter carriers, air taxi companies, business planes and private aircraft are hauling nearly 300 million passengers a year. The airlines alone account for almost 80% of intercity common carrier passenger miles, serving more than 500 airports. And what's too small or too remote for scheduled air service or even surface transportation, there is general aviation flying 90 million passengers a year in and out of 12,000 airports. By 1980, there will be two and a half million persons in the airspace over continental United States at any given moment, the equivalent of Los Angeles' entire population. Civil aviation is a partnership of technological and human skill, the marriage of man and machine. It was born of dreams and visions, tested under the crucible of adversity, the price tag you must occasionally put on progress. an incredible distance in just seven decades. After all, Kitty Hawk was only 70 years ago, and 70 years is the average expected lifespan of an American. It wasn't so long ago this Boeing 247 was the last word in air transportation. One of its designers predicted they'll never build one any bigger. Forty years later, the jumbo jets were carrying more flight attendants than the 247 carried passengers. Yes, aviation has moved fast, perhaps too fast for many of us to really grasp the role it has come to play in our lives. So fast, that lack of realization has created a series of stereotypes, of false generalizations about air travel and business planes and the private pilot. There are still those who regard aviation as a luxury, quick and easy transportation for the so-called jet set, a weekend plaything for the rich, a convenient but not very vital supplement to the automobile. True? You can answer this by visiting any airport and taking a look at the people who use air transportation. It's no jet set. It's a cross-section of America. The business aircraft isn't any symbol of fat cat capitalism and industrial plutocracy. 
It's as much a part of American business as computers and sales charts and advertising campaigns and production goals. It's communication via air transportation, a very large and important link in a complex economic structure geared to speed, to time saving, to quick action, to fast decisions. Nor does the private pilot fit the stereotype so many have, that of a man who can afford to own a rather expensive toy. If you could gather the nation's 750,000 private pilots in one place and film them, you'd see the same cross-section of American life visible at any airport. Yes, private flying often is just plain fun, but it's also part of the air transportation system. Almost 75% of general aviation operations are for business or commercial purposes. Those who worry about ecology worry about the airplane. In reality, 90% of the pollutants which most concern scientists are generated by nature. Only 10% by man. And of that latter 10%, the airplane is responsible for far less than 1%. Matter of fact, the airplane is one of ecology's greatest friends. Much of the food you eat, the state of your health, the preservation of vital natural resources, all depend on aviation. The airplane helps grow crops. Virtually all rice grown in America, for example, is sown from the air. The airplane battles insects, fights fires, controls livestock through inventory flights, saves lives, animal and human. The airplane even does something about the weather, battling one of man's oldest and most dreaded enemies, fog. To truly judge aviation's role, imagine what life would be without air transportation. If you had to substitute wheels for wings, highways and tracks for airways, the oceans for air, if you gave the entire job of moving people and goods to the railroads, buses, automobiles, trucks and ships, just the cost of increased travel time would amount to some $18 billion a year. All modes of transportation are partners and participants in the world's economy. But if the airplane were taken out of the picture, the remaining partners could never assume the entire burden without massive expenditure. If, for example, the automobile tried to handle all business travel, it would require nearly 53 million more trips a year which adds up to an extra 31 and a half billion vehicle miles annually. And that in turn would necessitate the construction of vast new highway systems. More than 93% of international travel is by air. How many ships would have to be built to absorb this load? Aviation is something like a family, occasionally quarreling, feuding, arguing, but, like most families, it has more in common than in conflict. A proud tradition. A unity of purpose in times of crisis. A determination to foster understanding of aviation's role in relation to the public interest. Aviation's most persistent enemy has been lack of knowledge, misunderstanding, cynicism, and pessimism. Since the day the first airplane flew, in 1910, a learned expert on air transportation wrote these words. It is idle to look for a commercial future for the flying machine. 
there is and always will be a limit to its carrying capacity, which will prohibit its employment for passenger or freight purposes in a wholesale or general way. There are some, of course, who will argue that because a machine will carry two people, one can be constructed that can carry a dozen. But those who make this contention do not understand that there is a limit beyond which the aviator cannot go. We call aviation a partnership, a family. Those who see it through the eyes of sentimentality, of romanticism, go even further. To them, it's a fraternity, a brotherhood with a kind of mysticism among those who love the sky. And there definitely is a common denominator on the part of men and women who, in working for aviation, seek recognition for the importance of that work. Not praise, just realization of what aviation means to a nation and to the world. What it has meant, what it will mean in the future. The airplane has brought a world closer together, ignoring the narrow provincial boundaries that are mere lines on a map. Mysticism or practicality, maybe to aviation they are synonymous. For the wings that serve, as a poet once wrote, really come close to touching the face of God.